This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keep Food Simple. Do you have a busy, hectic lifestyle? Always on the go, too busy to cook, and find yourself eating way too much fast food? Keep Food Simple is a Southern California-based food prep service that offers customized meals for all types. Whether you're a vegan, plant-based, whole food, paleo, gluten-free, keto, whatever it may be, Keep Food Simple has got you covered. It's time to take control of your health, boost your overall energy, and feel great about how you eat. Keep Food Simple offers delivery services in L.A., San Bernardino, Orange County, and Riverside County. Orders can be placed at KeepFoodSimplePrep.com. That's KeepFoodSimplePrep.com. Use promo code HERB20 for 20% off your first week of meals. All right, guys, let's get into this podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing, what more you'd like to hear about. Also, you can this whole herb session thing can be found on just about any platform now. It's on iTunes, as well as you Android users. It's going to be on SoundCloud. Everything will be linked in the video description. Thanks for listening. Appreciate all the support. Enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Herb Sessions. Been a delay, but I've uh, been putting a studio together and voila, here it is. So pretty good. it's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, so let's get into this episode. I got my friend here. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Michelle. What do you want? What do you want to know? How, oh. Michelle. What's your last name? Mendez. Now? Mendez. Yes. Is that maiden name? Or? Uh, it is back to my maiden name. Yes, okay. I've had quite a few uh, experiences in my life. <laughs> I uh, changed my name back to my maiden name last year, so I'm happy to be Mendez again. Nice. So Michelle's here. Uh, we've been I've been a long friend of hers since what do you think? Two thousand and something. <laughs> God. Um, two thousand minimum six years. We've six probably years? known each other. Yeah. So we worked at the same hospital back home in California. Then she moved to Utah, and then I abruptly moved to Utah. And here we are, unknowingly following each other <laughs> to places. And um, yeah, it's been interesting to see where our lives have taken us. But it's cool. Yeah. But I wanted to bring Michelle on because there are some hot topics nowadays in the world. In the, uh, do I say gay community or is it LBG? Either. Either? Either, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never know. How, what's the LBG one now? It's LBG... LGBTQIA+, plus, technically. L G G B T B T Q Q I A I A. Yes. Don't ask me to tell you what all of them are. <laughs> L, <laughs> lesbian, that's the only one I need to know about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. No, it's, it's just to be more inclusive. Um, asexual is now considered a gender identity. Uh, I'm sorry, sexual orientation identity. So it's... Yeah. In interesting yeah it's yeah i had bad. to look this up um because i just remember growing up it was the lbg t mm -hmm. community and now it, it's grown to i don't know what i is do you know what i is oh god don't quote me on it i want to say i want to say no i'm not even going to say it because if it's wrong i'm gonna feel so stupid Gotcha. Let's Google it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have the abilities to uh, Google anything right now. Um, just because my phone is being used to record this. But I know A is asexual. Yes. Do you want me to look it up? Yeah, go Let's ahead and look that one quick. up. Yeah. But yeah, like we were saying before, there is a lot of, I, get, I don't want to call it controversy, but a lot of people are kind of lost in where... The um, Equality Act is heading, um, a lot of gay rights, and um, I know you're, do I say in 
that world. I don't want to say. In the community usually is what we like so to call okay, it. Okay, so yeah. you're you're heavily involved in the community, and yeah. why not bring people who are involved in it to get an understanding? Because I'm only looking on the outside. I'm not involved in that community um, whatsoever. I support it, but it's just it's not on my radar to. Yeah, it's I definitely guess. different when you're affected by. I spent. 29 years as a quote unquote straight person. Uh-huh. Um, I came out when I was 30 and uh, I didn't, I cared about gay rights when I was not in the, com- not you know, technically in the community, but uh, once you're part of it, you, you kind of get a little bit more interested. Well, I and anyways got a lot more interested in, okay, what are these issues? What's going on? I think it's because when something directly affects you, you tend to be a little more curious about it. Right. Yeah. Dang, so you came out when you were 30. What was it like coming out? Scary. <laughs> Scary no, I, in the way of like um, traditionally, like I'm afraid of what my parents will think, stuff like that. Well, I don't I don't really have a close relationship with a lot of my family. So that really didn't it didn't hit me as hard. I don't live close to any of them except for my my sister who is well, I have two sisters, both are ridiculously supportive. So I knew no matter what, they'd be, you know, right alongside me and they were, but it was scary in the sense of people think that people look at you as they know who you are deep down, but you spend thirty years of your life suppressing something or acting like you are what they think you are. So you're almost, there's this aspect of, am I going to disappoint them for not being who they think I am? Mm -hmm. And also how much of this is going to change my dynamics with everyone. Right. So that part is what I think is scary. Did you get a lot of blowback from anybody? Was there anybody where like, hey, I don't, you know, I don't support gay, you know, in the Bible, you know, people tend to go down that road. Not to my face. <laughs> Not to your face? <laughs> yeah, everyone was very supportive to my face. Um, I come from a very conservative Republican family. So um, when I came out to my family, it was all over the phone because they're out of state. And, you know, very supportive, very fine with everything. But, um, you know, I, I hear what goes on behind the scenes and sure. what's happening when I'm not around. And uh, it's very obvious they're not as supportive as they yeah. claim to be to my face, which is that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I, I, I think I prefer that it's not to my face anyways. Really? Mm. Why do you think people get so hung up on if uh, like you're gay or you find the same, uh, well, obviously the same sex attractive or you're bisexual? Is it just because they're concerned about who you're having sex with? Is that their big issue? I am going to guess it's a little bit more... I mean, it has to come down to like religion, right? Like Most the of it, yeah. Bible tells you yeah. that you're not supposed to be, you know, gay. It's wrong. It's well, we can go into that in detail later. But <laughs> yeah, but they also say porn's a sin, and there's no porn in yeah, the Bible. Yeah, don't eat pork, and yeah, yeah all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think it's I think it's fear based. People are afraid of what they don't understand, and if you're not gay, you unless you're an ally who is just an open minded good individual i think people are afraid of what they don't understand Mm. do you think even if they did how how do you word because you're not really you're not hurting anybody you're not you know being a nuisance to society you you're people like every everybody else on the planet and i don't see what the issue really is like what are they afraid what are they really afraid of? I you being happy? I <laughs> you know. I think if you were to ask conservative individuals, I think that they would they're concerned that they're worried that gays are gonna corrupt their children, that gays are gonna, you know, have bad influences and and I because I don't understand it, I don't know where that comes from i really don't yeah yeah that's always been an issue with um my folks because my folks are very devout mormons and they were against i think it was the prop eight that came out or is prop eight or prop Mm -hmm. nine 
Um, they're very supportive and not um, allowing gays to be married. But I, I never got an answer as to what, what do you, wh 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 who are they hurting? And why are they, why are affecting you so much? You have to put signs on your lawn and, you know, like, <laughs> I've, I've had so many different arguments. Like, people are get so irritated with just, um, this going off a different topic. But they'll say, oh, man, you know, all these people on welfare, I pay for all these people. I'm like, yeah, but do you wake up and go, man, these people on welfare are just really ruining my day? Or do you go to work and just, you know, go about your day and let that be its own thing? Like, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I don't wake up and go, God, man, gay people, oh, <laughs> dude, they're just getting in my way. I can't go to the gym, you know? I think, I think there are really people weird. like There are people like that, though. And I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get, get it, it either. Like, what is it really hurting at the end of the day when you go to bed? Like, you losing sleep over it? I. We the, should find someone who believes this and ask them because I would. Like you know, I have a couple of friends who are very, um, who, some of my best friends who are very against gay anything. Um, and And I think we'll get to this other topic, but I think it's fair. They're allowed to have that opinion um, because you know, we live in the United States, you can believe and support whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And and they're not for it. But they would never go out of their way and start being like, you know, gay, you know, we're gonna take the gays down, whatever, whoever says what. But you know, they're they're not like into it. And, you know, I had to be okay with that because when they told me, I was like, really? Like that bothers you? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, dude, my my kid will never be gay. I was like, I mean if they were, then what would happen? You're not going to be their dad anymore? That'd be a bummer. Unfortunately, there are people like that. I know. You know. We have a lot of friends who are, especially living out in Utah now, lots of gays who came out that have Mormon families, and a lot of them have been disowned by their families and told it's wrong. And I think as time passes, I think a lot of them have gotten relationships back with their families, but nothing like it would ever be if they were you know, straight. So it's sad. Yeah. It's really sad. It sucks. It's a bummer. Yeah. It's well. tough. And it, it gets even more as I'm learning about this more and more and more. I guess a, the big battle right now is the trans community. Is I guess it's having probably the most difficult time with everything, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the Equality Act, which um, I definitely want to get into. But the trans community, it, it's it's tricky. Um, I see where people do get kind of like, you know, you you're you're a boy. You were born a boy biologically, and now you identify as a woman. But I f I feel like people forget, and this you you could be whoever you want. I I don't care. But biologically, you're still a man. You may have the appearance of a woman. You can look like a woman all you want. Biologically, you're a man that l looks like a woman. And for some people, when you start to get, like, I don't know, um, health care for different reasons, like some men prefer to have a prostate exam by a man. Mm -hmm. But say, you know, a woman transitioned into a man and they didn't know, I can see where... Yeah, it can get conflicting. Yeah, and I think it, it, when it comes to healthcare for transgender, I'm in the healthcare field. I'm yeah. a nurse. I think it's it's definitely the transgender person's responsibility to inform their healthcare providers because we don't know, we don't know what's going on, you know, it, and it's important for us to know that. Right. And every experience I've had with a transgender patient, they, they're very upfront with it. Oh, I, you know, I transitioned a few years ago or I'm in the process of transitioning. And I think it's, it's hard for people who have not spoken to a lot of transgender people or um, been around them or provided them with healthcare um, for them to understand that it's, it's kind of simple as long as the yeah. transgender person is on board with, hey, you need to disclose this so that we can better care for you. Right. But it's it's not as complicated as people think it is. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point you bring up. I'm I'm not bashing anything about transgender. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand it because it is 
very very like hot topic very yeah. for a lot of people and I, and I get that but it comes down to what I'm trying to say biologically when you come in for some sort of healthcare need or anything we we have to know biologically what you are because different medications react differently with men and women absolutely That's just the science. Yeah. Well, and if someone's in the transition phase where maybe right. this, you know, female to male trans, you know, transgender is in the process and they still have ovaries and they have abdominal pain, like we need to know, like, hey, could this be an ovarian cyst or could this right. be, you know, even though you present as a male, like it's important. And I think, like I said, every experience I've had, I think they know that that's important to disclose all of that. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's, it's, it's still, it's tricky. It's it, definitely it tricky. It really is. It's, um, the more I think about different things, um, especially when it comes to kids, like even there's a weird law in Canada that they're trying to pass that if a kid comes up to their parents and says, say he's a boy, he goes, hey, mom, dad, I feel like I'm a girl. And they le legally have to go take their kid to uh, therapy. And then that doctor has to determine whether or not this kid goes it starts going into hormonal treatment and if you don't the parents go to jail i did not know this yeah it's wow very very controversial like that's interesting it's huge um don't quote me like exactly but that's kind of like what's the word i'm looking for um kind of my take on it um but yeah there's a law that they're trying to pass and i was like hey, what what five-year-old maybe once maybe like one in a million would know but like at such a young age, they go from playing in the mud to playing with cars to playing, dressing up in dresses to Barbies to falling asleep to in the pool. Like they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know. That's how I feel. I don't, I've never that's met a five year old who's like, you know what? I really feel like I should be a chick. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, and it'd, it'd be interesting to find out where a five year old is getting the whole idea that gender identity is something that's should be upfront and in, like this is what's important to you right now we're like usually it's like teenagers that are right. figuring out who they are and yeah you know and it, it, it's it's super dangerous i've been into the book this book by deborah dr deborah show she's um her doctorate's in like sex neuroscience and all this stuff and she has a book called the end of gender and what she's trying to say in the book, she's saying you you can transcend to all you want, but the law that's coming up in Canada, because she's in Canada, is you're typically when a kid does feel like that, it's usually because they're they're gay and they don't know how to handle it. So what they do is so say um a gay a gay boy wants to transgender into a female. It's because he's attracted to men. That way, if he, you know, later has a relationship with a man, he's a woman, and so he feels more comfortable with it instead of just embracing, like, later on, this is usually a phase that most likely this kid will be gay. But they do the transgender thing, so they feel comfortable with what's occurring so they don't get, like, scrutinized and things like that. That'd be interesting to look into, like, what percentage yeah. is... Because uh, there are there are people who transition and then decide like wait this actually wasn't for me so they reverse everything and reverse the hormone right. therapy and yeah. so that that'd be an interesting that statistic and to and find that's out. That's in her book as well. It talks about um, you know uh, there's a lot of people who transition too early and they end up being very like suicidal and wish they would have just waited. And all she's saying in the book is just wait, like. Yeah, some doctors want to do hormone therapy before they hit puberty because that way it'll generate much quicker and the body's used to it, mm -hmm. which that part I understand, but I don't know. A lot of people wish they would have waited because it's a lot when you start removing everything and adding and... That's really interesting. it's, it's I intense. I'd like to... You'll have to give me the information about that book. That'd be really interesting to read. Yeah. I've been following a lot lately because she is on the front forefront of all of this um she's very supportive of the trans uh, the whole gay community but she's just saying like we're taking it too far too quick like legally an adult is 18 not five years old 
And that's what she's saying. You, let's wait till they're adult to make, they can make the decision. And let's leave it there. Huh. And, that, and that's kind of how I, I kind of agree with that. Like, Do you? Yeah, because I didn't make any radical changes or decisions until my parents were like, okay, you're 18. When you wonder too, it, that's why I, statistically it'd be nice to find out like how many people who transition before they're 18 end up regretting it or end up reversing or yeah. because I wonder, I, I mean, I'm sure that's something that happens. Absolutely. That's something sure. that happens, but I, it'd be interesting to find out like, is this even something that's like statistically an issue or is this something that's like one in every hundred thousand? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure there's like, I know since uh, statistics, I can't never say that word. Um, it's pretty high for the regret of doing it too early really yeah a lot of folks wish they would have just waited and because i i feel at such a young age you're not really grasping at like what's in front of you that that's a lot of it's a lot of surgery and a lot of um you know did i make the right decision you know it should i have just i don't know Again, I'm not a transgender, so I don't know. Yeah, and I don't know many people who have transitioned when they were younger. Yeah, I only yeah. am like you know on no personally people who have transitioned later in life. So which you know, you should wait till you're older to do a lot of things, get married, right. get tattoos, <laughs> any Drink, permanent, smoke, yes, you know, any permanent things or even serious doing things. Like, probably, uh, I don't know. Even doing drugs, they recommend you wait till you're at least 25. Yeah, until your brain's developed, yeah. and yeah, it's yeah. interesting. I hadn't thought of this. So I'm not saying they need to put a law on it, but I'm they really need to figure out um, some sort of understanding, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm trying to say something. No, I get where you're going with it, but it's, it's yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things where I don't think you, you can really get it unless you've been there. Right. But it could be difficult for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know if my kid came to me and be like, yeah, that would be hard. Like, do do you know you want to love and support your kid, and, and then you tell him, no, you know, you're if you're a boy, you're gonna stay a boy. Like, but dad, you know, I really feel like I'm a woman or a girl, and like, fuck, what do you do? I wouldn't know. Just support them, support them through yeah. it, and I think, I think that with those situations, I don't have kids, so I don't really know, but I think with those situations, like you just have to support your kid and and help them through to make the best decisions. While also realizing, like, like you said, these are some permanent things, and yeah. you know. I mean, luckily, I'm pretty sure there's lots of ways to reverse things, which is nice. But also, I wonder what that does. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I don't know if no, know enough about it to yeah speak on it. But I definitely something to look into. Yeah, I'm trying to get my one friend from Phoenix. She's a transgender. Super nice. Um, she transitioned from uh, male to female, and um, uh, her story's pretty incredible. And I'm trying to get in. I had was talking to a friend I made on Facebook. She was a transgender here in Utah. And I don't know if I said the wrong thing at the wrong moment and kind of triggered something. But, yeah, she's like, I, can't, I don't hear from her anymore, you know. Just because I, she's like, I'm trying to get a job, but people in Utah so are discriminative and I'm mm. like well what are they discriminating about she's like well you know I'm a transgender I'm like well wh what are you putting on your your application like what does your ID say to your application does one say male and the other one says female I don't know that world so that's why I was asking I'm like is that a big deal that things don't line up like female to female male to male maybe the job they thought we were hiring a male and you came and actually you're a female, but we need a male. Like, what was the reasoning? I was like, maybe you have to get your ID changed or, and never heard from her again. So just. Interesting. I don't know if I just pissed her off and that was, <laughs> but I, I, I was, I never go out of my way and be like, oh, you know, I'm going to mess with this person and start ruining their day. It was just simply because a lot, Myself, including a lot of people, just don't understand w what is exactly they are discriminating against, you know? And that's where the Equality Act comes in. 
Um, I did read up on a little bit of it, and one of them was like getting a loan, a bank loan or something like that. Pretty much everything. Everything? Yeah, it's it's so taking it break, way break back. Break it down for Taking me. it way back. <laughs> <laughs> I know it goes all the way back to like Jim, Jim Crow laws it, and shit like it that. It goes way back to like, I think like the first like big, I think they called it the reconstruction deal. It was like 1800s, 1880 something mm-hmm. was when they started figuring like, oh, actually we need some like, you know, civil rights stuff happening here. But nothing really changed until 1964 was a civil rights act, um, you know. African Americans were considered three fifths of a person. Yeah, which so is, it, they, well, they weren't protected <laughs> under the law because yeah. they weren't considered a whole person. Yeah, which is crazy, freaking insane. <laughs> um, but you know, they realized it was wrong and decided to change it. And the Civil Rights Act protects people based on gender, sex, um, identity, ethnicity, um, and at the time. I mean, gay rights were just not even on the radar. We're still, you know, 50 years from any type of reform. So sexual orientation, gender identity weren't included, which understandably it wasn't an issue at the time. I mean, it's always an issue, but um, it just wasn't on the radar of, you know, politics. So jumping forward, um, I'm sure everyone's heard about like the, you know, the bakers that wouldn't bake the cake for the gay couple and all that sort of stuff. So you know, gay marriage was legalized in 2015, which is like insane that, you know, it, it was it's, even, it's yeah. not that long ago. <laughs> no, it's um, not that far, not that far off. Yeah. So the Equality Act has been, um, it was first introduced in under the Trump administration and it basically kind of got brushed to the side. It, it technically, I mean, You'd like to say it passed under a Supreme Court case um, where the Supreme Court determined that, yes, sexual orientation, gender identity is included. However, um, in 2000 and, gosh, what would that have been? 15 and then 19, I believe it was. uh, The Trump administration wrote an amicus brief, which is essentially like a presidential opinion on whether or not it should be protected. And they wrote, this brief that stated they don't believe that um, equality includes gender identity and sexual orientation. So it went back to how things were before of like the Supreme court case basically was like, it wiped everything back out to, to zero with anyone being protected under the law for being gay or being transgender or any of those above things. So, we're now at this point where the Equality Act has been put forth to protect under uh, pretty much everything. It, the initial court case with the Supreme Court was um, work discrimination, workplace discrimination. So now the Equality Act is including housing, workplace discrimination, of course, um, taking out bank loans. Like basically, like just how you can't discriminate against someone for being... Indian or African American or a female or a male, they want to just include like gay and transgender. Mm. Well, as you know, <laughs> as you know, as dun, you dun, know, dun, dun. it barely passed the House. Um, I think all the Democrats and six or eight Republicans voted yes to put it through to the Senate to become law. So now we're just we're just waiting on that. So it is going to become a law. It has to go through the Senate. Oh. So the problem with that is with the Senate being split right now, they can, the Republicans can filibuster it by just not voting on it. Just not like putting their votes in and everybody like basically smashing it back down and it's mm. got to start back over again. So Damn. it's kind of on the line again this year. Damn. I know. It's insane. And the more you read into it, it's just so Biden signed an executive order his first, I think the first couple of days of office saying like that he agrees like gays should have rights and transgender should have rights and they should be protected equally. But it still has to become a law. Yeah. God, that's so weird that it needs to become a law. Yeah. To protect human beings. Yeah. You know. Pshh. I know it's heavy. It's and, and the more you read into it, it's like, oh, it's like so, it feels so backwards. Yeah, it feels like, like we do work 
I, I feel like the United States really hasn't gotten far with anything, really. Like, sure, we're, most people do get along. Most people go about their day. But we still are having issues with r- racial issues. Still. I mean, much hasn't changed. <laughs> it's, we just get to see it more. We just hear about it more. Yeah, you know? social media really, I think it's gotten a lot of younger people involved in these issues as well. Yeah. Which is it's a double-edged sword, you know. There's a lot of anger and hate more visible, but there's also a lot more... Support. Yeah. And understanding. It's just, it's... God, I, I feel like we just, we really haven't really progressed as human beings. We're still a lot of us versus them. Sad. You know? <laughs> And and I, I still feel like everybody should have the right to believe whatever you want to believe. But at the same time, you know, like, look, you know, say you're a straight man and you're married. Like, look at all the freedoms you have. That's that's all anybody else is asking for, whether they're transgender, you know, gay, whatever. That's all. Yeah. They're not asking for much. They're not asking you to go in your house and, like, disrupt your living <laughs> yeah well, you know? and then you're forced to kind of look at like okay like why don't people want this like let me just be understanding and like really see like well why 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 are people against gay rights like what is it that's against it and uh i've, I've actually been emailing with our state senator mike lee <laughs> yeah i did see that on your uh on your ig feed i was like look at you talking to the senator well, I, you know i I'm very much like right now of the mindset, you know, they have an email address, they have phone numbers, they have offices, like if you have a question, go talk to them. They're, they're representing you. You should have an option to talk to them, but yeah. I can't get him to email me back anymore. He, they uh, won't. <laughs> no, well, I guess where I was getting at, uh, I had sent him an email asking why he was against gay marriage and why he was against the, e- the equality act. Cause he had put out a statement that he was absolutely against it. And his reason was he thinks that religious people's religious rights to practice their beliefs will be put at risk if they're forced to take care of a, you know, marry a gay couple or provide um, the same workplace care. And so my response to him was, well, why are you, why are you protecting the right for people to use their religion to discriminate instead of the people who are being discriminated against. Right. Why aren't you protecting these people who are actually being harmed from this as opposed to the people who are harming it, mm. you know, harming them. And uh, he won't write me back. Solid point. I've, uh, I've written him back three times now to try to get a response and nothing. Damn. It's weird. Yeah. Well, you, I've never heard anybody who was like, yeah, I wrote my sin. And I'm like, they write you back? <laughs> <laughs> once. Nope. He did once. He did once. And then, you know, I hit him with the hard questions and that was too much. So Yeah. Well, he's probably got his assistant looking at it. And just Absolutely. Hits, del- hits delete. Like, well, that's they're probably. Not, they're not doing anything up there. Yeah. I'm guessing that's who wrote me back was probably some tor- type of assistant or sure. someone in his office. But even them, I'll take, an, I'll take a response from them. I don't. Sure. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody write me back and let me know why it's okay to discriminate but not protect those being discriminated against yeah like let me know because i'd love to know yeah i don't oh, it makes me all mad i'm all fired up now <laughs> <laughs> makes me Motherfucker, you let me know Ugh. <laughs> 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 uh, anyways so how, how does your um partner feel is she pretty gung-ho like you are is she kind of just chill like hey, you, know, uh, you know she always says i'm a better gay than her <laughs> <laughs> better gay <laughs> Um, no, she's definitely more, pa- more passive and chill than I am. I get yeah. a little bit riled up about things, but, um, it's a good balance. She keeps me from, she's great by the way. <laughs> she is so sweet. I always love seeing her. She always gives me a nice big hug. <laughs> How you doing? You know? <laughs> yeah. She's awesome. She's yeah. a good, she's a good, um, balance to me. Yeah. I, lo- I love it. Yeah. Yeah. She's always seemed super chill. Like, yeah. all right, you know, cool. And you're like, no, motherfucker, let me, let me tell you why. <laughs> let me tell you why. They're wrong. <laughs> yeah, she brings me back down to earth and reminds <laughs> me, like, okay, what can you do? You can rant all you want, but what can you do? I'm like, okay. So have you talked to any more of those in your community about it? Do you, is there people who are kind of like, uh, what do we do? Or are they kind of on the same boat as you? 
in terms of fighting for this being s- proactive yeah um it's kind of been hard with everything going on with you know quarantine and everything like that we aren't really seeing a lot of friends we have a very small select group of mostly vaccinated friends that we see and you so know what's your take on that vaccine sidebar i got it oh <sighs> I got it. You got it? You got to listen to scientists, man. <laughs> Let the experts do their job. <laughs> <sighs> I know. Everyone's, you know, people are, my my thing is, if you want to have an opinion on something, do your research. And if your research backs your beliefs, cool, man. Yeah. Do what you want to do. But be informed. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know? I get I get why people are hesitant to get it. I, I sure. totally understand that. And as long as they've done the research, Okay. Yeah, you know, I've I've seen people get hit pretty hard with it working in the medical field, especially doing all the CT scans for it and all the x-rays that I do. It, you know, it's something, but when you see the survival rate supersede, like, the death rate, it's, I don't know. It, it's nothing like polio. Polio was a son yeah, of a bitch. Yeah, that's now a good that's point. that's something to worry about. If that were to ever that's come back, <laughs> then I'm never going outside. Yeah, yeah, but that's a good point. COVID, but. I don't know. Y- you know, it does kill people, and it's super unfortunate. But people are also living that have gotten yeah. it. I think the, know, the without a vaccine. Yeah, I think the problem has been the influx into the hospitals, like the areas where people are. There's you know less of a population. The hospitals aren't being like overwhelmed. People are getting treated easily, getting taken care of. I mean anyone compromised is going to die. Like it's just sure. what it is. Um, but you know, when the hospitals get completely overwhelmed, yeah, like s- more people are going to end up dying because there's no more ventilators. And I know the hospital I worked at ran out of ventilators. They were ordering them from like outsourced companies to try to get more people on vents. And you know, when it's, I, I think COVID on its own is not this insane thing, but when it becomes this pandemic where it's just, massively infecting people everywhere that's when it's yeah it's bad yeah it is scary you know i don't i don't know like i i want to get the vaccine but i'm also like i know i'm pretty sure i've already gotten it two or three times i know i already had it once when it first hit Mm -hmm. because nobody knew what it was and all these people were coming in we're doing scans like why are these people so sick and then I got it. And I was like, holy fuck. What is this? <laughs> it does feel like death. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's also hard, you know, you know, they want you to get a vaccine. They're not forcing you, but it's like, okay, I've been exposed to it I don't know how many times before all these like restrictions got put in place, all these rules and gowning and masking. Like it it hit the healthcare fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it I think if you've been in the healthcare field the past two years, like you've been exposed to it without wearing masks before yeah. it was even a thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I do remember that Pe- people would come in and their flu tests would be negative And we're like, well, that's weird. Cause those are definitely flu symptoms. Oh, right. well and we weren't even wearing masks then. Yeah. <laughs> well, like they tell you, all right, go home, drink plenty <laughs> yeah. of fluids, you know, stay hydrated. Yeah, it's crazy. I know it's hard to, and I actually had this conversation with someone the other day. When you're in the medical field or you're in the um, essential worker field where you're still going to work every day, you're encountering, you know, thousands of people a day, it's hard to look at it. You're, you're almost not as afraid of it as yeah. m- most people are who well, aren't. You're desensitized. De- that's a perfect word for it. Yeah. You're totally desensitized to it and you feel like, okay, if I'm going to get it, it's going to be at work. It's not going to be, it's probably, well, I shouldn't say that, but statistically i'm gonna get it at work i'm not gonna get it at home with you know yeah. my small group of friends or which i guess most of them are vaccinated now anyways but yeah. you know it's it's i can't tell you how many times i've been coughed on <laughs> you know? know like hey you know ma'am sir we're gonna come in and i gotta put this x-ray and i'm here say this is their <laughs> face i have to put the x-ray board like this to push it down uh-huh. and there's, there's just like <laughs> like dude <laughs> stop <laughs> you know and yeah. it's like, yeah, that, that's how you get it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for the second. Now they're talking about fourth wave COVID. I'm like, you give it a break, people. <laughs> give it a rest. 
Uh, it's well, done. You anyway. need to stop talking about it. We, I think the humanity <laughs> knows what we need to do. Go do it and stop talking about yeah, it. Yeah, people know how to be responsible and... You know, this whole like everyone going to Florida and hanging out on the beaches with people from, you know. I think it's great. It, okay. It's got to go back to it. I don't know why everyone's I so bent out of shape. Like, I don't know. Oh, this though. is too soon. I'm like, well, when when are we going to do it where it's normal? I mean, I totally get where you're coming from. I totally get where you're coming from. But as long as those people aren't going to hang out with their grandma who doesn't believe in COVID. True. Because she's going to end up in the hospital yeah. and that's where the hospitals get over, you know. If you're going to be irresponsible in terms of spreading it, then you have to be responsible about your actions afterwards. Because right. what makes me mad is when the hospitals are like overrun because people are being irresponsible, irresponsible. you know, because for the most part, it's not the, you know, teens, 20s, not even really the 30 year olds that are getting hospitalized. It's the it's older the people elderly. who are getting exposed from their grandkids or mm-hmm. their kids or yeah, I think there's, there's a way to be responsible about it, I think. Yeah, I think it's, I'm more concerned about like my grandma getting it mm-hmm. than anything. So right, because you know they're not gonna. I mean, yeah. Well, she she got it and she's happy and she can go back out and do what she wanted to do. Um, but I I see your point too. I'm I'm more concerned. Younger people, eh, you know, mm-hmm. pretty strong mo- for the majority, unless you're overweight. Um, yeah, you usually type can of secondary it. diseases or. Yeah, usually younger people could kick back pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But as you get older, you know, things slow down. And and uh, I just I was com- more concerned about the elderly folk than anything. Yeah, yeah, because it is you know. not a good way to die, man. That is no. It's, and seniors are so, they're so precious, yeah. all of them. Even the ones that are just batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. Really, it's not their fault. They're just, mine has it's left just, them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But every time I talk to my grandma, um, especially during this pandemic, and um, man, the stories that she has, you know, just like living through the war, just the time, like raising kids on her own. It's like, fuck, I'm a bitch compared <laughs> to her, you know? Well, and it's I'm crazy. I'm a wussy ass human being compared to her. It, right? And they're like looking at you, my both my grandmas the same way, like, no, nah, it's fine. If I get it and die, I get it and die. I've been through all this other stuff before. <laughs> right. And you're like, no, like, yeah. no. <laughs> That's you're supposed Shaker, to think of I lived through the war. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, my God. It's you bad. know? Yeah, my, um, s- on a Saturday note, uh, my grandma on my dad's side. So my grandma, his mom, uh, she passed away beginning of this year. So <sighs> it was. It sucks. It sucks. I don't think it was from COVID, but I'm sure it didn't help. She was just older, and she man, her health just went down quick, abruptly, mm. and um, it sucked. You know, nobody could go to the funeral or anything, and I think that's where people are very adamant, or like those loud folks, is when it affects you, like you said, like, you know, in the transgender community or um, the community, when it affects you, it's different. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. it's on your radar. Yeah. So I see why people want the vaccine. I see because when it when you lose family members, it's like, dude, it's because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then you can't go to the hospital to be with them or you can't. Yeah, you can't see them. You can't give them. your goodbyes. Like, what a horrible way. That's hard. That's got to be. You know, ugh. that's <sighs> life's tough. But to die alone and not see anybody. Fuck, man. It's Before you go. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. And you just hope that the nurses who are with these patients are compassionate enough to, because I've sat with my fair share of oh. dying COVID patients and it's, uh, yeah. it's heavy. It's really heavy when their families can't be there and you're the only one there and uh-huh. you're gowned up. They can't even see your face. And yeah, you look like fucked. a little space astronaut with your suit on and shit, like trying to give them comfort and they're yeah. just like, what the fuck <laughs> are you wearing? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh God, that's why alcohol sales have gone up among <laughs> nurses <laughs> and healthcare professionals, period. Cheers. Uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers to that. I know when the COVID first hit, when I was living in my apartment alone, I, I was drinking bad. I was drinking a lot. I mean, I wasn't irresponsible, like going outside and being, but you know, I would come home and it's coping for sure. At least a good, you know, quarter of the bottle of whiskey every night. Yeah, I was good. killing it. Yeah. I discovered lots of new wines throughout yeah. this. <laughs> I discovered new whiskeys, new <laughs> wines. Um, oh god it was bad it was in a bad place is i'm glad we're 
kind of pushing out of this. Yeah. Especially for mental health and Yeah. Cuz damn, uh, I think I hope people realize like we're not built to be this alone creature and survive by yourself. It's just it's not who we are. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And I think it's I I've always hate that saying like, "Oh, you got to be by yourself to know who you are." You got to look. It's like motherfucker, no. No. The real person comes out when you're around people. <laughs> like how you interact with folks, you know? If yeah. Man, pe- people give you vibes and energy, and when you're at home sitting on mute, and then your brain starts to talk <laughs> to you. Well, we're social creatures based on survival <laughs> alone, you know? You didn't survive as a Neanderthal by yourself. Like right. Like, community was community. how you survived. I, I hear that. that more and more and more. You need a community. You got to have a community. Yeah. Got to have friends. You can't be this loner. And, you know, I think that's where suicide really takes off. Yeah. You know, these people that just feel so alone. Yeah. And, you know, they're just afraid to reach out. And um, this whole thing really was sad. This was the first time when I was working at the U during it. I saw, you know, people hanging themselves shooting themselves in the face that was the first time i've seen hangings i'm like fuck man like this is people are really going for it yeah it's been a (sighs) rough mental health year or two now for people i know it was for me i was ready i was ready to cash out i was over it yeah i was like you know what like i i was even in therapy talking to that talking to him every week And I was just like, you know what? I just don't give a fuck, to be honest with you. Like, this talking is okay, but (laughs) it's not doing a thing for me, man. I need to get out, and I can't. Yeah. He's like, well, he he didn't have much to say. (laughs) He's all (laughs) shit. (laughs) He's like, you know, what do you do? Go hang out when, you know, you can't. Nobody wants to come over or or, because they're afraid, and, you know, it's... (sighs) God damn. It's hard times for sure. Never again. I think it's just super important PSA while we're at it. Like when you're feeling like low or down, like you just like get over it and reach out. Like mm-hmm. whoever, first person that pops up on your phone list, like anybody, like just call them, call them because I was reading this article how, well, it was an article, something where they were saying like, if you knew a friend was suicidal, like what would you want them to do? I want them to come talk to me. Well, if you were suicidal, would you reach out? No. So it's like, fuck, like, yeah, yeah. don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Like reach out. Like, even if it's super uncomfortable, like there is someone in your phone that wants you around and wants to be there for you and would do anything, Yeah, you know, to make sure you're okay. So just reach out, reach out. Yeah. And I learned that the hard way too. Cause I ended up, I ended up at, the emergency room from a sheer just mental breakdown. I went, I went in there. And I was like, <sighs> I didn't. I, I. It wasn't that I didn't want to want to live. I was just like, I'm fucking done, man. Like I'm tired, I'm tired of like putting up a fight. And when I get like that, it, I tend to not talk. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Like you just. And I had a crisis person come in and talk to me like hey what's going on and it took me like a good 45 minutes to finally say something because you're in sheer panic it's fucking scary what your your mind will do to you Mm -hmm. yeah like and it's not weakness i'm pretty strong dude no it's not weakness but everybody breaks i don't care who you are i almost think it's the opposite of weakness because for you to be able to close off and say like no, like no, I'm not going to talk to anybody. No, I'm not going to, like I'm going to commit this act. That's t- too much strength, honestly. Like yeah. it's too like to be able to tell yourself that. Like that's a scary place to be in. Good point. I I couldn't imagine stringing up a, a rope and being like, I'm in it. But think I'm, of like I'm all the way. How Fuck. what mindset that person is in. That is so sad. It's scary. It's, it's probably just, I, I, I almost feel like they're not even them. Mm-mm. I feel like that's just, that's something or somebody else in there. 
You know, that's because that's not normal. That's not a normal. Fucking chemical imbalances, man. <sighs> I, you, chemical. you buy I, chemical no, it's true. It's totally true. Is it true? Yeah, I because I get I take skewed with them. Like, eh, no, 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 no. I take antidepressants, Do and you? it's changed my life. Really? Like, I've tried so many, time. and I've I've gone the other way with it, where I'm like, God, I've turned into an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just who you are. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe, folks, I'm an asshole. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Be your happy asshole. <laughs> I have my moments of being an asshole. I've gotten better. Yeah. I used to be a little. Little prick about shit. You know, people who are too nice are no fun. Yeah, you can't be too nice. Yeah, you can't be too nice. And I realized that too. I was like, man, I can't please everybody, man. I'm gonna piss some people off. And you also can't be, uh, you know, a first line responder in the medical field and be a nice person. You gotta have a little bit of sense of like morbid yeah. tendencies. Yeah. That's why we all get along. Yeah, you gotta be a little. You gotta be kind <laughs> in the medical field, but you also gotta be like, all right, dude, stop being a fucking punk. Mm -hmm. and get up. <laughs> I always hate the patients that come in. I'm like, hey, you, you think you can walk over? No. I'm like, well, how did you get here? Well, I walked in here. You know, my wife dropped me off. I go, motherfucker, get up. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You yep. can walk. Get yep. up. No. Yeah, no. It's a total defense <laughs> mechanism for us, too. Could you imagine if we, like, took everything, like, so seriously? So sad we'd never make it. We'd be strung up, too. Like, there's no... Yeah, I would probably be a dead person by now yeah. if I took yeah. every little bit serious. Yeah. So we just have a sick sense of humor and lots of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck, yeah, we gotta, got dark. You, you got to have a twisted sense of humor, <laughs> for sure. Oh, man. I wouldn't say we got dark. I just, um, you know... Just real topics. It's real. It's, it's happening. Yeah. Especially when you see it. It's like, oh, shit, man. I remember when one guy came in uh suicidal attempt shotgun right to the face and he missed every vital piece of brain but it it blew through i think it went like this and it came out like that fuck. so he barely missed his eye i think he lost his eye but fuck that's man. intense imagine blowing your face off fuck. and then you live through it and then you gotta deal oh with it oh god that sucks. <laughs> it's not, I don't know what kind of life you have after that. Yeah. And know? then like, man, especially like on your face, people are going to ask you about that always. Yeah. That's some shit. It might even make his mental health worse. You know, I'm not saying like it should have happened, but. Kind of wish it probably would have at that point. For him, I don't know. I mean, he was obviously going for it. So, fuck, it's, man, human beings are wild. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. Oh, wild yeah. sons of bitches. Yeah. You know. Speaking of desensitized, you think aliens are real? I do, yeah. Get out They've got to be. Shut up. They've got to be. <laughs> you know how many freaking galaxies are out there? Like. I guess. I've never seen them, though. Like, isn't it like thousands? <laughs> thousands of. You don't have to see them with your eyes to know they're there. What? <laughs> <laughs> Science. Science. <laughs> There's electrons all around us. God, you don't believe in them? You field. don't believe in them. No. Yeah, I know. I've heard you talk about it. But I had to ask everybody because it's another huge, more and more. It, what's funny is like, oh, man, the government released all these pictures and documents. I'm like, hold up. You're going to believe the government that lies to you day in and day out? I and mean, you believe the alien bullshit? I, I don't <laughs> know that I believe that like aliens are coming down and like nah, snatching people up. Like I don't no. believe in those kind of aliens or like, you know. And planting chips or like, you know, butt stuff with aliens. But I mean, there's got to be something out there. There's got to be with all the thousands of I don't even know. I should do more research before I start throwing numbers out. But there's got to be. We're like this little tiny rock floating around and we have this much life. There's got to be other trip, places huh? that have. Yeah, it's a trip. Yeah. I think people forget to realize like, dude, we're on this little spinning rock in a fucking big thing out there that god knows what was, it's going on out there and we're just floating around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know hopefully yeah. you don't get hit by a meteor i know it's a trip <laughs> it's such a trip everything is like life is so delicate and then you have people like you know starting wars and doing crazy terrible shitty things to people you're just like with all this like with how like insane it is that we're even here 
This is what we're fucking worrying about. Yeah. This is what we're fucking fighting about. I know. When you think about that, we're like, we're still fighting over fucking racial bullshit. Mm-hmm. Dude, think of think of what's out there. Yeah. I think we should worry about that. You, right. I mean, you we know? should band together in case these aliens decide to come down. Well, that's, that's what they want. Have you heard that whole conspiracy about the New World Order and the <sighs> fake alien invasion? Yes. I listened to a <laughs> podcast actually the other day <laughs> about that. It's not that far off. Look what's happening. We're being it's shown more and more of these alien like spacecraft. And we're now we're just being like, ah, whatever. At first it was like, holy shit, man. There's like now a majority of people are like, oh, another sighting. Cool. I'm go get a cheeseburger. <laughs> You know, we're yeah. being slowly I desensitized. So when the big one happens, <laughs> oh no, we're gonna be like, oh fuck. You know what though? Conspiracy theories are um, they're Dude, interesting. Some of them are like, Ugh. well, if you start getting into any of them, you can see why people like really believe in them. Like really, like you get why people are all queuing on and like, like oh, yeah, sometimes you start shit. going down a rabbit hole and you're like, oh shit, do I believe this now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you gotta just. I don't know. Is yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't believe the alien thing one bit. Uh, Did, have you seen the new interview with Joe Rogan and uh, Mr. Uh, what's his name, Mr. Musk? No. He asked him. He's like, "You believe in aliens?" Because he's pretty. He's on the forefront of all that space shit. He's like, "No." He's like, "If they're out there, they're pretty relaxed about not showing up." <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe they just can't get to us like we can't get to them. <sighs> I don't know if so-called they have such technology that's what's weird how do you what maybe they don't though i don't think they do because like we obviously don't yeah i mean it's not to say that you know there isn't a more advanced galaxy out there but also like aren't we supposed to like blow up in a few million years or something yeah and so. supposedly las vegas is supposed to run out of water in a couple of years anyway too so really yeah you don't hear about I that not hear about this yeah. Especially uh, Utah has a big issue with water too. Yeah, St. George by far is in bad shape with water I don't know usage. About that. Yeah, so I don't know why I'm talking about that, but <laughs> you know, if if space if aliens can come down and they can help us with their so-called advanced technology, man, like the fuck, dude, come on. Maybe they're saying the same thing about us. Yeah, maybe, huh? Yeah, because there's a lot of good people on the planet. Yeah, no, there totally is. I think there's, I still think there's more good than evil out there. For I sure. really do. It's just evil's real loud. Yeah, it always seems to be loud. Mm. You never hear the good shit. Mm -mm. It's always, oh, homeboy shot somebody or fucking somebody got raped or it's like, God damn, is mm -hmm. anything good going on? Give me the like good story about how a dog like saved his family from a fire, you know? I want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, who knows? But if they're there, I don't know because... The whole spacecraft bullshit, man, drones have been around for a long time. A long time. Like the saucer thing, that was around like Hitler time, Nazi era. People want to take them like getting like sightings of them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They actually had, they had built, Nazi Germany had built a prototype aircraft that looked just like that. And they were able to get it off the ground. So maybe the aliens are looking at us like, man, you guys are fucked up. Like, we don't need to come in and do any of that. You guys have got some shit going on, on your planet. But who are they to say that? Well, maybe they're like so technologically advanced. They're all like happy. I don't know. I don't know either. You know what I mean? <laughs> who are they to like put who are they that to judge us? Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> People. Yeah. Things. Who knows? I don't know. There's a theory that um, dolphins are... Aliens what? like dogs. <laughs> what, <are you? laughs> what? Yeah. Because dolphins have like a crazy advanced language. They talk to people. Yeah. And they talk to themselves. Like it, it, it's beyond like crazy. And it's weird that they understand human like like the commands. Yeah. That, They're like that trainable. Part's yeah. tri tricky. T that part's trippy. Like how the fuck does a dolphin know to do the, you know, the thing? But I mean like dogs can follow that. commands. I guess they don't only really have like a language. It's more like a like a body language, right? That's how they communicate with each it's other. It's more like an aggressive, like territorial. Yeah. Kind of. But dolphins are like dee 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 dee. You know. You Do you think if it was possible to train a whale, they would? 
I mean, I know they train like you know free willy, but yeah, they train um, orcas. But like, like but a they blue get whale. aggressive too. A blue whale. Like if they could fit a blue whale in a tank somewhere, do you think those are trainable? Because they talk too, right? Yeah, they talk and like. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? S- yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think animals might be smarter than us. They are. They're way beyond us. I think if we kept humanity would look at Mother Nature and realize we're not that far off from it, that we are it, I think people would chill out and, s- and quit trying to figure out, like, what what's our purpose? Do we have a purpose? No, we really don't. Yeah, We're just like every other animal on the planet. We wake up, we need to eat, we need to survive, and we need to mate. That's about it. Yeah. How do we just convince everyone that that's it? Because that's it. I don't. I haven't heard any. Th- there's so much philosophy I've been into. Like they've gone so so deep, but when you look at it plain in pictures, like we're no different. You know. Yeah. And people who don't believe in like biological evolution it fucking blows my mind. Oh my god. Because why do we have a, uh, what is it? A tailbone. <laughs> when you look at a little. What is it? it's not an imb- is it an embryo? Yeah. Embryo. They fucking have a tail. It grows a tail. And then it goes away. Yeah. But y- you still have it. Yeah. When I shoot x rays, I'm like, oh, it's there's in your, there. There's your tail. <laughs> like, how the it's fuck weird. do you not believe? Like, yeah. come on. Well, and you. Uh, it's so simple. Well, and you look at like, like the dinosaur evolution. Like, like fucking bird. birds survived, man. Birds survived. They're fucking dinosaurs. Like allig- evolution is a thing. That's a Al- dinosaur, yes. dude. Yeah. That's a dinosaur. I know. Evolution's a thing, man. But you know what? Gotta listen to the Bible, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> All right. We won't even go on that. How do Christians people believe in a Jewish God? That part. When I read that, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Christians believe in Jewish God. But yeah. He's not a Christian God. He never came out and said... You know what? I'm a Christian God now. He was always been a Jew. No man, man created religion. Oh, for sure. And like I don't know, it's storytelling. Yes, we love to tell stories. Yes, to make people behave. Right, love to. You do it to your kids. Like, hey, there's Mm -hmm. a creature in your closet. If you (laughs) act up, he's gonna come out and eat you. Like, look at the Bible. Hey, man, if you do that, man, oh, dude, you're going to go, like, you're going to burn eternally, dude? What was that? What's that like? <sighs> you don't want to do that. Don't do that. And so much of the teaching is, like, been, like, altered with. Like, 1942, oh, they added they added into the Bible that gays are, pedof- like, act in, like, pedophilia ways. Like, that was added to the Bible. <laughs> that was added in 1942. How the fuck are you going <laughs> to tell me? All of a sudden, yeah, it's it, when people are allowed to alter the history of the Bible, there's you're like, okay, you completely lose all credibility, yeah. And why are we still hung up on the Bible? I don't, it's a cult, it's, it's so the largest cult in the world. Old, it, the difference between religion and cult is Jesus, yeah, that's the only difference. True, that oh gosh, it's got real controversial. Have you seen? Yes, but go ahead. Oh, uh, <laughs> on Netflix, the one that um, murder amongst the Mormons. Have you seen that documentary? Yeah, I actually read the book. Oh my god! I have that book. So, spoiler alert! If you all want to watch it, three, two, one. Turn. Do you? I cannot believe that guy did what he did when he. When I was like, when I watched it, I was like, this white salamander letters, what is this bullshit? Because my parents were, and I was in that world. Mm-hmm. I was like, I never heard of that. So I'm watching this. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this really happened? And then it gets to the end. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this motherfucker made yeah. it up. Yeah. Like. And people believe it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah. It's and all there. It's like, how do you not look at like, the Book of Mormon or the Bible and be like, look, if this guy could do it in the present time, what makes you think they can't do it back then? Yeah. And this guy did it unbelievable yeah. what he did. Honestly, the dude's a genius. Oh, it's it, it's the most manipulative, cunning, 
mastermind uh, artwork I've ever yes. heard and laid eyes on. I was like, yes. And then at the end, they're like, you know, this we only grabbed a couple of his documents. Mm-hmm. There's we don't know how many more are out there. I was like, what the fuck? There's everything's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I didn't know much about the Mormon religion until I moved here and started dating an, a Jack Mormon. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's that's it's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. It's nuts. I was like, that's how that's. I was talking to my brother. I was even talking to my cousin because they're all out of the church and everything. Yeah. I was like, dude, what if that just Joseph Smith reincarnated? What if he just wanted to keep it going? Because if you look at Joseph Smith, he. And well known as a con artist, very well known. What if this guy is just just him coming back for more? Coming back for more. I mean, I mean, look what he did. The writing was so spot on. These guys had to put it under a microscope to look at the ink, and they saw these little bitty cracks in it, and that's how they discovered. They had to go microscopic yeah. on this guy. Yeah. What? But think of how much, like, wasn't he getting, how much, he made, like, a ridiculous amount of money. Millions. Yeah, to do Fake it. Fake documents. And then he manipulated his wife on top of that. <laughs> so so like, fucked. what the fuck? <laughs> this guy even would set up a, what are those called? A lie detector thing. He had one at his house, and he would do it day in and day out. So he could later, if he ever got caught. He was able to pass it, yeah. the polygraph. So he could beat it, yeah. Sure enough, the cops pulled him in and he passed it. And they later found out like it was him just by that ink. <sighs> he was so far ahead of Mastermind. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like I lost I couldn't go to sleep for a couple of hours. Like, what <laughs> but the this fuck? is some shit. How could I never yeah. have heard of this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's some good history there. Some Dude, that's the kind of history people need to learn about. Right. Like, but that's but we don't talk about that. We yeah. don't talk about that. Yeah, we can't talk about that. You know, you can't talk We're about that. We're like on the radar now for even talking about it. <laughs> no. They're coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> it it's just it's out there though. Mm-hmm. And the more and more you get exposed to it, it's like, okay, well, how is religion even still around? But I've said that so many times, but then I've looked at certain family members where it has done a lot of good for them. Yeah. So I can't really say it's all bad. Well, the basis of it is good, like yeah, family orientation good and in there. you know helping the community and being there for each other and loving as long as you're of the same religion. Right. You know, That's so the as long as you don't go too deep into it, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. But then you get real deep and you're like, wait a second, like you, you love thy neighbor unless thy neighbor is black, gay. Right. You love them as long as they're white. Muslim. Yeah. 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 As long as you're white and straight, we love you. You're like, well, wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> if you're white and straight, great. Yeah. But also, mm, is that really the best place to be? Yeah. I don't, man, it was a trip. That... You, I highly recommend that to everybody to yeah. watch. You yes. need to watch like, and what even tripped me out more was one of the guys in there is like, look how he was, he was going to cripple a whole religion. He was about to just ruin pretty much yep. almost get rid of it. Cause he was been like, dude, your doctorates are all wrong. You've been lying here. Here you go. And they would have never known. Nope. No idea kind of crazy he got caught by the littlest thing yeah it wasn't even the bombs or the killings he did <laughs> it was straight up the ink was cracked yeah that's it or else he would never got caught but it's it was like not weird. real it, 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 yeah you it look at re- you're like there's no way there's no way but he was able to just mimic so many different handwritings you know the paper was genius how he did it he would go he flew to New York would buy old dated books, cut pages out that weren't used and uses that paper. I mean, so clever. So smart. Clever. So smart. But, and, Ugh. and that's why there were all these guys were like, yeah, you know, it, it, it's legit. And these are people with doctorate degrees looking at it. I mean, it's not their fault, but it just goes to show like manipulation is. <sighs> when it makes you wonder, like, how do you, how do you trust all the rest of it if it's that easy to 
Yeah. How do you trust, like, even the Constitution of the United States of America? <laughs> 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 oh, no, we're getting conspiracy <laughs> theory again. <laughs> like, how, how do you, you know, anything? Yeah. You yeah. know, it doesn't even have to be, like, an old-ass book. It could be anything. Like, dude, how do you believe anything anymore when your world gets rocked like that? Yeah. I think it is important, too, to question everything, though. Shit. You know, don't ever believe anything blindly, which I think religion gets a lot of people that way. Yeah, they get you. Me. They get you when you're down. Mm-hmm. They get you at your lowest. Yeah, you know, and um, like I said, for some people it works. Absolutely, it really works. There's well. plenty of Mormons that love the gay community and sure. you know advocate for them, and you know we shouldn't shouldn't generalize, I guess, in that way. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, extremist anything is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Everybody just chill out. I know. I don't get. It. You know what's getting me fired up too is the whole um, abuse towards the Asian community too. Oh God! Because I'm deep in the Asian community, yeah. super deep. The uh, majority of my friends from come from all over parts of Asia, and it, it hurts to see that go down. It's awful. Yeah. It's absolutely awful, but I'm so glad that it's being brought to light because. I know like in bigger cities, like there's groups of people that are like signed up to help escort, you know, the elderly to and from the stores. And it's fucking sad that we even came to that. But I'm glad that it's out there so that there's a little bit more protection and more awareness because it's it's that's a side of humanity that I just don't understand. I don't don't think we're supposed to. I never understood that either. It's like, oh, you know. Here's the problem with the United States and how it thinks. It's like, well, they're a foreigner and, you know, they don't look like whatever they're supposed to look like. It's like, motherfucker, you, the whole United States is a foreigner. Guess what? Yeah. Besides the Native Americans who rightfully should own pretty much everything of the United States and doesn't. Yeah, who I are mean, treated terribly here anyways. Oh, my God. We can even get into that. Like, look what, <laughs> what, what we did to the Natives. And then Asian America, Black America, like what the fuck like this united states is a foreign country yeah solely yeah you go to japan that's japan right you know yeah. that you're gonna see 99 percent of japanese folks mm-hmm. there a lot of the world is that way it, besides the you united know? states yeah the united states is probably the only place where every everybody is here Mm-hmm. and that's what makes it so like special but there's so many people that are like so hateful towards any type of diversity yeah and it's just ugh, that's what needs to get crushed out that one that's what needs to get like obliterated is this like discrimination and this hate towards anyone who's maybe not exactly like you know those who hate want them to look or be or right White, you can say it. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what? You know I'm what gets me to be fired like up. <laughs> you know what gets me fired up. I understand like the jokes about white people. Like I, I think they're funny as fuck. Yeah. But even sometimes I'm even like, look, man, not every white person's a fucking racist yeah. person. Like, k- knock it off with that shit. Oh, you're white. You're privileged. I, I never woke up feeling privileged ever growing up in my household. And anybody knows who my parents. There is no privilege there whatsoever. I didn't get into every school I wanted to get into just because I'm white. You know, I didn't get X, Y, and Z because I'm white. I didn't get first in line because I'm white. You know, that that needs to stop too. This whole, I never knew what white privilege was till I was almost like 27. Yeah, I, I hadn't really heard of it either. I was like, oh, I'm privileged, I'm white. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I think Who thinks like that? I think it more refers to like the oppression that like, so this, you know, as an, an elderly white person is probably not going to get beat up the same way as an elderly Asian person would be, get beat up. Like, sure. th- I think it more refers to that or like, you know, people who assume because someone's black and walking down the street, they're up to no good. A white so person walking down the street. I think it's, I think that's more what, I think people use white privilege in, probably ways that it shouldn't be used right but i think it's more i think that the root of it is from stereotypes yeah yeah which i think like yeah i'm 
I'm lucky that I wasn't born a, a black girl because they have it a lot harder than I do. For sure. They have black a lot community has always um, mm-hmm. historically had it harder yeah. than anybody. Yeah. Native Americans, immigrants. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's there's a privilege in that sense. But um, yeah, I think I think just coming just coming together and really understanding that differences are not a bad thing and that there are white people who want to help and advocate. And, you know, I think that that's the group that needs to be the loudest. Yeah. You know, is the people who aren't being affected because true, true. They're the ones that are going to help make the change. You know, you brought that, you bring up a good point. I was watching, I forget what movie it was with Kevin Costner and they were working on flight for, uh, I forget the movie, but it was, african-american woman that helped with the propulsion system and i was watching it with my ex-girlfriend who's filipino and kevin costner came in because this this woman had to go across like the whole building to use a restroom because it was only like a white restroom and kevin costner got mad because she came back late he's like why are you late like you know you need to be on time she's like I had to go use the restroom. It's across the hallway. He's like, really? So he went in and he took the sign down that said whites only. He's like, not anymore. I'm like, how come a black guy didn't do it? Why is he always the white guy? She's like, because people would listen to the white guy. And if a black guy would did it, he probably would have got arrested and saw it as like a, a hate crime towards whites. I was like, oh, yeah, fuck. I never shit. thought of it that way. Yeah. But it sucks that it has to be quote-unquote white community too yeah I, yeah I, I, uh, it's, it's fucked, fucked man. <laughs> <laughs> you know i i it's honestly tough. have so much more hope for the future though like it seems like god i feel so old when i say this but the the younger generations i feel like they're so much more aware of social issues where like we were just kind of raised in them sure and we didn't really we weren't really taught like what thing what things actually were. We weren't actually taught what prejudice was. We weren't, it wasn't out there like it is now. Yeah. And so I really, really have a lot of hope for the future. Yeah. These kids are smart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cre- cleverly smart. Yeah. Some of the kids, I mean, like, how old are you? Right. You, know, you know all that? Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that out. It's social media, being able to reach out to people and talk to people and learn things. And because yeah. we didn't really grow up with the internet. No, like it was barely in high school. We were still using dial up, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and a cell phone was like a flip phone. Yeah, like, that was like the shit. Yeah. Or you got a pager. You like, got the yeah. slide up one with the key ba- uh-huh, keypad. With the key on it. Oh, man, you can check so fast. <laughs> I still hate having a phone, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was like, get a new phone. I'm like, what for, for dude? I yeah, I really don't care. It's nice to disconnect sometimes for sure. You need to. Yeah, it's healthy. Because I've noticed I've been getting on social media a lot lately just because of all the stuff I need to do. I'm like, man, I'm getting, like, I I almost caught myself. I was like, dude, I need to start getting, like, some Botox. I need, like, <laughs> I need to get thinner, maybe a little bigger. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> you know? I'm fine. I don't need, yeah. you know what I mean? You, all you see on there is perfection. Perfection. That is what perfection. sucks. Perfection. Well, and and then you so look at real. yourself like... Oh man! Man, I got wrinkles. Right, I'm all old I got now. cracks in my forehead from squinting all the time. You know, <laughs> it's I'm all not the stress. big like Rock, The Rock. You know, <laughs> yeah, double edged sword with that one too. Yeah, yeah it's dangerous. Great to reach out to people who are like minded and learn about things, but also people only post the good things about their lives. They don't. Nobody posts the ugly picture of them. Nobody. They don't. Posts when they're sitting at home bored with nothing to do or picking up dog shit in the backyard. Yeah. Like, nobody posts about that stuff. Yeah, nobody, some of these, like, models and everything, like, no one looks like that. No. Fuck. Yeah. No, it's crazy. The things you can do with a computer is insane. Yeah, it's not It's not fair to, like, young kids to see, like, these un- literally unreal expectations. Yeah. That's tough. They're hot. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but they're not real. Boy or girl, like, they're good looking, but. Yeah. Fucking nobody looks like that. No. That's a lot of, like, behind the scenes work. You know, injections and things that they're not talking about. Yeah. Know? So it's. Kids, you're fine just the way you are. Yeah, yeah, don't. <laughs> Man, parents, keep your kids off that as long as you can. It's not going to do them any good. Right. Who cares if their oh. friends got a phone? 
So, I don't know. Humanity is headed. No, no, no. We're going to say they're headed in a right direction. Right direction. Things are going to get better. I hope so. I really hope we stop, you know, the racial riots. I hope we stop beating up innocent, the Asian community, you know. When I hear some of my friends go through, like, oh, man, they just think I'm Chinese. I'm like, fuck. You know, that's some ignorant fucking mm-hmm. people out there. I love the Asian community. It's probably, psh, everybody's always told me, like, dude, you're the whitest Asian I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and it's weird. I never, like, oh, man, I wish, I'm, sometimes I wish I was Asian just because, you know, fucking, you guys got cool shit going on. <laughs> But also, some of that shit's tough. On, they're tough on their kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're they are. really tough on their kids. And um, I wouldn't want to go. Th- but, but I think I connected with that community so well because my parents are almost splitting image of, like, Asian parents. Really? They were fucking brutal. Like, we want you to be like this. Don't embarrass our family. If you do, you know, we don't want anything to do with you. You know, we want you to look a certain way, act a certain way, marry a certain way. Like, it is spot on. All my Asian <laughs> Like, I get you guys. <laughs> like, what they go through. I'm like, dude, I get it. Yeah. Like, in a weird way, I get it. Just because, yeah, I have parents like that. Yeah. You know? But they've always, man, every friend I had, their moms have always been so, like, my mom just fucked. My some my best friends, you know. Yeah, I would have never thought, because where I grew up, it was, you know, the area is very heavily like Hispanic mm-hmm. and, and white trash and <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> you know, it's very poor yeah. community, not mm-hmm. much to offer anybody really. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's a bit of a poverty level, for sure. Growing up there, not much to do but get in trouble. Uh, but the majority of my friends are, you know. Hispanic. Uh, I had one friend, Kendall. He's Japanese, Japanese and white. That was it. Yeah, it wasn't that super was diverse, that's for sure. Now it is. Yeah. There's a lot more, um, the Asian community is a lot more up there. Yeah. And the Indian community, too. I haven't been back in a few years. I don't miss it. I don't <laughs> miss that area. Yeah. I miss my friends, but fuck that area. There isn't, uh, there's nothing there for anybody. There's some good people up there, but. Yeah. When yes. I tried moving back there, I was like, yeah, I hadn't been back there in a year. And I get back there, and I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> it looked like third world country. Yeah. Everything was shut down. I was like, there's nothing open. The only thing that's really available for jobs is healthcare. Yeah, I believe it. Just driving back and through for work to San Diego and back. Man, I'm like, I'm not getting off up here. I'm keep going down yep. the hill to get that gas. <laughs> <laughs> not yep. stopping up here. I always tell my friends, get out of there. Even if you move down to like Redlands, just get out of there. Because yeah. that community is not growing in the right direction. Mm-mm. They're growing in population, but there's no jobs. There's no nothing for the youth. And they wonder why like drugs. They wonder why that's the second violent city in the county. Yeah. Like San Bernardino. Yeah. You know. It's, yeah. When you ain't got shit to do, man, you'll find something to do. And it's usually trouble. Yep. It's a shame because there's the area itself isn't desirable, but you know, the surrounding mountains and you know, you're just forty minute drive from Big Bear and Yeah. There's lots of really beautiful areas, but I don't know why that area just cannot get it together. It's, it's, it's weird. poor. Man. It's poor. It's just I wouldn't mind seeing it burn to the ground, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think it's a dump. I don't think anybody should live in a desert like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty yeah. bad. <sighs> I can't well, believe we I got out. I'm, I'm so glad. Kay. Going back the second time, I was like, okay, I'm never coming back here. <laughs> <laughs> and that answers that. And I, now I know why I'm not coming back here. <laughs> you know what, though? It's probably good for you to go back and see, like, oh, shit, no, I did make the right decision leaving. Yeah, it keeps you humble. Like, mm-hmm. pff, when I hear people bitch out here in Utah, I'm like, pff, you think you have it hard, dude? <laughs> this is this is your bad area. <laughs> Even the homeless has got it good out here. <laughs> Calm down. 
Yeah, this is yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is your bad area. Yeah. Everyone's like, Yeah, West Valley's pretty tough. That's where I work. I'm like, This is yeah, this is it, huh? <laughs> Careful when you walk out to your car and you're like, why? A couple this is skinny fine. skinny cracked head white dudes. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. They're my patient the other day. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, This is what you guys worried about? There ain't no crime out here, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's uh it's yeah humbling to leave and see like oh like you don't have to like grow up in in this yeah like, you don't, you don't have, have to live to in stay. this yeah i think that's the danger of small towns like that it's like man i can't get out but when you take that leap and you're just like damn i'm going for it and you know yeah, it of works. most people it's scary yeah for most people in that community yeah. they don't leave because it's hard it's yeah. hard to leave and find a new community and a new a new home and make new friends and Sure. I mean, it, yeah, it's still hard for me coming back, back out to Utah. Yeah, it's still it's like, I'm like, God, man, like nobody wants to be friends out here. Like nobody wants to come on the podcast. They're too afraid to like feel like they're going to expose themselves <laughs> and people are going to judge them. And, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's a different human being out here for sure. Mm -hmm. Very like, I don't want to say they are conservative, but they're also very just, um, to themselves yeah it's a yeah. yeah it's a different culture completely yeah. different culture nicer though a lot yeah, nicer than so nice. <laughs> even if it's that fake nice you know i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i went and got tires and like the dudes were super nice there if i were to do that back home i know this ghetto ass attitude yeah you no know? one looks at you no yeah. one talks Everyone's to you rude as fuck yeah so yeah, it's not too bad it. being out here that's for sure yeah at first i hated it in my last podcast before i moved out i was dumping all over this place. i know i was just in a bad place i was having a manic episode and no one was stopping me <laughs> you know should i have stopped you should yes. i have held you down okay if you I try to do it again i will i told my uh brother and you know other people like if i ever start talking like that and i'm not making any sense to stop me because no one stopped me I, I and i understand too because they were like well you gotta let him do his thing you know figure mm -hmm. it out it was a bad idea i moved to california two weeks later i came right back <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what though i feel like sometimes you need you need that reassurance that you made the right decision i think so you know and i think that was definitely it for you yeah, I needed something because it felt like I made the wrong choice right when I got here the first time. Well, and it super sucked when you moved out here. <sighs> like that Dude, was, was the, the beginning of everything. Yeah, everyone told me that too. Like, yeah. don't blame me for wanting to go back home. Yeah, like you lived in such a cool area, but everything was closed. Yeah. That's like, why I moved down there. I was like, yeah, dude, there's bar. There's, yeah, there's, there's walking sh distance there's shit going downtown. On. Yeah. And then it was like, nope. I was like, oh my God. That's a hard time. That's a hard time to move out here. Yeah, never again. Yeah. At least I'll never live downtown in any kind of city again. It's yeah. stupid. <laughs> Living on the outskirts now is way better. Yeah. It's so nice. It's yeah. It's just like, oh, there's a world out here. Because when you're downtown, you're trapped in like that little bubble. Like you just stay in it. Yeah. And you forget like there's a whole state out there. Like, go <laughs> check it out, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you're out here now. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, I just wish I could get more people to come visit. And, you know, I miss everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's tough. I can't make, it's hard making friends out here. Especially my job now. I don't interact with anybody new. I'm going to introduce you to everybody that works there. Yeah, but you're, you're a traveler. I don't you're care. Never. I still know everyone who works <laughs> there. You're gone 95% of the year. No, less than that. <laughs> <laughs> Taking time off. Are you going to keep doing that for a while? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's 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 good money. Utah pays shit for <laughs> nurses out here. I know. So it's it's good money for now. I won't do it forever. Like, there's no way I could do it forever. But I'm going to do it for a couple years, save some money up, and then I'll probably start working out here again. Yeah. To come yeah. back come back to where I'm at. I know. I'm tempted. <laughs> Sometimes I'm tempted. I miss, I miss the people. I, and now that you're freaking working there. I love it. You know, it was weird when I was looking for a new job. I was like, you know what? I want a job where I'm not in a hospital anymore. I'm sick of the hospital environment. I'm sick of the politics. I'm sick of going to get patients that can't walk who are truly sick. And you got to slide every, like, I'm over it. 
I want something. So I found this job. And I was like, I'll take it. It's perfect. I was like, oh, my God. The hardest thing is just fighting boredom. <laughs> <laughs> if I could work there every shift, I would do it. It's great, though. You know, I get to chill. I No one over me. Obviously, I have a boss that checks in. But you, you're your own. You can work as hard as you want or work as slow as you want. No one's critiquing you. Yeah. At first, they were kind of getting at me because they didn't know me. And they're like, you know, we don't see a lot. Of my boss came to me like, are you having any issues? I was like, no, I'm chilling, man. <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm getting some feedback that, you know, some some of the nurses don't, doctors don't feel like you're really hustling enough. I'm like, I get it because I'm new because they don't know me yet. Mm -hmm. They don't know what I'm capable of. They don't know that I'm really good at what I do. Mm hmm and I was like, at first I was pissed, but I even told him before I got hired, I was like, look, you're probably going to have an issue with the way <laughs> I present myself because <laughs> I'm so, and even, even as anxious as a person I am and kind of like, um, kind of tense when it comes to work environment, super like, all right, man, cool. Well, yeah, let's get it done. I'm not the one like, there's an order like, ah, you know, running with my head chopped off. And I think that's what they wanted. So I would cruise over there. I'm like, yeah, all right, man, cool, too, you know. And then uh, she told me that. I was like, it's because I'm new. Just give it some time. Give, give it a couple more months. Let them get to know me. And it finally all went away. Yeah. But it happens every time. Even when I started at the U, same. My boss pulled me in. Oh, we don't really know. Do you really want to work here? <laughs> it's because <laughs> I'm just chill. I'm just chill. It's just who I am, man. I'm not this, like, manic worker. Like, I don't. Yeah, and I also learned I'm not going to break you. my back for corporations anymore. Nope. Sorry. Nope. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be what you want. I'm not breaking my back for you anymore. You know, for what? So yeah. you can make it, so that corporation can make a ton of money off of you, and you get paid dimes? Well, and that's how you get burnt out. Like, yeah. you, we're so early in our careers. Like, we cannot get burnt out right now. I know. I was burnt out my first 10 months. I was like, oh, I yeah. hate this career. This is a, this is the worst idea I've ever. And then I finally calmed down. <laughs> you know, because I I am the type of person I need to, you need to leave me alone and just let me do it. You know, I I I hated being a student. I understand that you have to be critiqued. I get it, but I never got to thrive because they're always, nope, nope, you do it, nope, 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 can't, nope. I'm like, fuck, dude, you're not letting me be creative. You know, you're not letting me be an artist here. Because x-ray is an art. I don't care who you talk to. Like, to get some of these angles and, like, things you need to look at, it's just not. All right, you push the button. Dude, it's, there's more to it. I don't know how you guys run those scanners. And the scanners, it's a whole nother, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're. Know how you do it. We're physicists. Yeah. We're. I, I don't think people realize I have a degree in physics. I have to understand how radiation works and interacts with the human body. Like, it's just not point and shoot. Mm -hmm. It's not like, just pressing, putting on, someone on a table and pressing a button. Right. Because if I give them too much radiation, you know, a couple years down the road, you have cancer. Mm -hmm. And I need to know how to not do that. I need to know how to not <laughs> give you cancer. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, we appreciate you. Oh. Only the, <laughs> only the kind nurses do. <laughs> I think a lot of people just assume it's the easiest job in the world and you push a button at certain points. Yeah, you do. It's you don't even have to think because it is, you know, push a button. Cool. Come second nature. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like starting, I, you know, anything. You start an IV like first you suck. Like, Absolutely. And after a while, all right, you get good at it. Mm -hmm. right? You start to understand how things work and you have to appreciate that because that's an art, too. Yep. Every. Not you, but a lot of nurses I know suck at starting IVs, <laughs> let me tell you. Sometimes yeah. I wish I was like, just bring them over and let me do it. I'll do it for you. <laughs> because I got 10 years in lab. All I do is hunt I hunt veins down. And now I start IVs because I have to do contrast and stuff. So, but yeah. On so behalf of all the shitty nurses, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors too. Yeah, they can be real big assholes. They think it's just the simplest thing in the world. Well, you can't get that. I'm like, dude, motherfucker. If I give this person contrast, their kidneys are gonna go under. Do you want to do that? All right, let's try to figure something else out. Yeah, let's do some plain <laughs> films. You know. Oy. But 
enough of all that medical field. Well, my friend, this has been a super pleasure. We, uh, we talked about a lot of things. We went I around ho- in I circles. Hope, I hope we talked about our what, the community and everything. I hope it gave some people some understanding. And I mean, I'm no expert, but I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. You gave me a good understanding, and that's all I'm looking for because I don't understand. Being that I'm not in that community, I don't understand what the great issue is, you know, what the struggle is daily in and out for, you know, b- gay, bi, lesbian, trans, you know. I don't know what the I is, though. Do you Intersex. Know? Intersex. I know asexual. Mm-hmm. That one doesn't make sense because we're not asexual humans. I think it's more referring to identity, like okay. being like androgynous, maybe feeling like you don't identify as either male or female. You're kind of just. But you still like to have. Do you still have a sexual Or does asexual refer to like not being interested in males or females? I think that's what it refers okay. to, actually, now that I think about it. You're just so you're just not sexually You're just not like a sexual active. being, yeah. Got it. I don't know the I one is Interse- we're gonna have to do some serious research. Yeah. Now I'm I know the other kinda. ones. But the queer one, I'm I'm lost on that too. Is wouldn't that kind of be in the gay category? It's like an umbrella, yeah. Like, like some people call st- themselves queer as opposed to gay. So, so if you're queer, do you still see I'm a I'm a queer man. Does that make I'm still identify as queer, but I still have a wife and that's OK. I'm not saying it's not, but but I you're not no gay. I'm, I'm confused on I, that one. We're, we're going to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode, we'll uh, just focus we're just on going to break down all the letters all those because. I get lost in that one. The gay and the the queer one. I'm like, well, I mean, most of the guys that are queer are gay, right? Or women that are, can women be queer too? I I think so. I wish I could give you a definitive answer, but I feel like I need to hit the books on this one. That'll be our next show. We'll just focus on these ones because. um, Part two. Yeah, part two. (laughs) I'm curious to know how these all. Um, identify especially when you start getting that equality act like you know you're asexual how does that work um especially when you need medical help or i don't know you know i'm not saying we have to know how you identify but we also have to know biologically if you're male or female stuff like that so keep that post-it note yeah i keep it right here (laughs) so we'll figure it out next time All right, folks, that's it. I appreciate you listening. And as always, thank you for listening. And you know I'm repeating myself there. Um, Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Um, Catch you on the next one. Peace. See ya. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keep Food Simple. Do you have a busy, hectic lifestyle? Always on the go, too busy to cook, and find yourself eating way too much fast food? You big fat ass. Keep. (laughs) Uh, I gotta try it again. Hold on. Because it's too much, like back and forth. It's hard. I don't think people realize how hard it is to read this thing or to do reads. All right. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keep Food Simple. Do you have a busy, hectic lifestyle? Always on the go? Too busy to cook? Find yourself eating way too much fast food? Keep Food Simple is a food prep service that offers customized meals for all types. Whether you're vegan, plant-based, whole foods, paleo, gluten-free, keto, whatever it may be, Keep Food Simple has got you covered. It's time to take control of your health, boost your overall energy, and feel great about how you eat. Keep Food Simple offers delivery service in L.A., San Bernardino, Orange County, 
and Riverside County. Orders can be placed at keepfoodsimpleprep.com. Use promo code HERB20 for 20% off your first week of meals. All right, let's get into this podcast. Do hold on. Fuck, we got to start over. You're about to stop it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's too hard to edit all that back in there. <laughs> or, or, I mean, it's not that hard, but I don't feel like doing it. Uh, I'll just uh, go like that. Double guns? No. You'll know. I'll let you know. But I won't say it. What What should I do? Like, uh, I know. I'll turn. I'll like. I'll go like this. Or or just. Oh yeah, this is going on before the <laughs> before the actual episode. Oh. This is the before and then I go into the podcast. All right, let's try this. <sighs> try this again. Let's try this again. So what are you doing? You're just gonna move the away. I'm just gonna like uh, I'll say w- my last part and I'm like, all right. Just kind of turn. All right. Okay. Let's do this one more time. <laughs> uh, do you have a bit? Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, okay. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keep Food Simple. Do you have a busy, hectic lifestyle, always on the go, too busy to cook, and find yourself eating way too much fast food? Keep Food Simple is a food prep service that offers customized meals for all types. Whether you're a vegan, plant-based, whole foods, paleo, gluten-free, keto, whatever it may be, Keep Food Simple has got you covered. It's time to take control of your health. Boost your overall energy and feel great about how you eat. Keep Food Simple delivers. Fuck. Uh, Let's swig of this. uh, Wet my palate. Hey, you don't. I can't. I can pick up all that. Oh. Uh. All right. Let's try this again. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keep Food Simple. Do you have a busy, hectic lifestyle? Always on the go. Too busy to cook and find yourself eating way too much fast food? Keep Food Simple is a food prep service that offers customized meals for all types. Whether you're a vegan, plant-based, whole foods, paleo, gluten-free, keto, whatever it may be, Keep Food Simple has got you covered. It's time to take control of your health, boost your overall energy, and feel great about how you eat. Keep Food Simple offers delivery service in L.A., San Bernardino, Orange County, and Riverside. Orders can be placed at keepfoodsimpleprep.com. That's keepfoodsimpleprep.com. Use promo code HERB20 for 20% off your first week of meals. All right, folks, let's get into the podcast. Remember to subscribe to the channel, 
like the video and leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing and enjoy.